Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and I'm back at it again with even more wrestling figures. But this week it's not WWE, not AEW, not the Road Warriors, not the Freebirds, not the Road Warriors. It's the New Japan Pro Wrestling Ultimate from Super 7 Series 2. Way back before the first series got delivered, the second series of Super 7's NJPW Ultimates were announced. This set was supposed to be four of the six members of Los Ingobernables de Japón, and by the time the series was actually delivered, one of them defected to the Bullet Club, so if anything, it seems even more out of date. Beyond that, these figures look amazing, just like last time they come in great packaging. The package comes in a raw cardboard carton, and inside an awesome box with a beautiful slip cover. The figure is displayed in the box nicely as well, as is the boatload of accessories they come with. Anyway, like I said before, this series features L.I.J., well, at least some of them from one point in time. Los Ingobernables de Japan, or in Spanish, the Ungovernables of Japan, is a faction in NJPW led by the charismatic king of not giving a shit, Tetsuya Naito. Joining Naito in this set is Bushi, the ticking time bomb Hiromu Takahashi, and the King of Darkness, Evo. Conspicuous by their absence are Sonata and Shingo Takagi, both of which I would have loved to see in Super 7 Ultimate form. But what we do get is pretty awesome, even for the 50 bucks a pop price tag. Each figure comes with six pairs of hands, multiple heads, soft goods clothing, and other accessories. Anyway, I've waited long enough for these things to show up at my door, so let's not waste any more time and take a look at NJPW Ultimates by Super 7 Series 2. Alright, so let's take a look at Tetsuya Naito um, in the box here. We're only going to look at one box this time. I already went over the package design last time in the last episode for the first series of these this, these figures. Um, link in the description below. So if you want to see those, and it's all pretty much the same. Not that that's a bad thing. These are fantastic boxes. Um, you've got the cardboard carton inside that. You have uh, this box inside a slip cover and this figure uh, displayed with all that you see here. Um, the, this part of the box here, the turnbuckle pads are obscuring the massive amount of hands these figures come with. They come with like six, seven pairs of hands a piece um, besides coming with extra heads uh, real, uh, you know, material clothing, um, cloth goods clo clothing, and uh, championship belts in some cases, in the case of Tetsuya Naito. We've got two heads here that we can see. We've got one with the baseball cap on, and I, I do believe that's removable as well, and uh, one without. One with the uh, the, the eye kind of up so he can do the, the signature pose, which we'll see later. So he's wearing a hoodie, and I know he's got a t-shirt on under that hoodie, and there might be more inside. I don't know. I haven't seen the inside of the box yet. I have not opened it up yet. You can tell because there's a little uh, twist tie holding him in the box. Um, not that that was absolutely necessary. I know these things are sealed in. They aren't going anywhere. So uh, the, the, the twist tie, really not any reason for that to be there. But, you know, there you go. Um, and this is what he looks like inside the box. Box, again, very awesome looking box. As we turn it around, um, we can see the profile for Tetsuya Naito. And there he is doing that signature pose that we were talking about where he holds the eye open. And uh, there he is with his baseball cap on. Height, 180 centimeters. That's 5 foot 11 inches uh, for, you know, pretty much everybody watching this video. <laughs> Weight, 102 kilograms or 225 pounds. From Tokyo, Japan, his finisher is the Destino, and there's his, uh, his Twitter handle. Um, if you uh, can read Japanese, you can follow Tetsuya Naito on, uh, on Twitter and see what he's up to, and I imagine that's his name in, uh, in Japanese. I don't know! I don't read Japanese. Whatever. 
Um, I'm, I'm dying to get this thing open. I waited forever for these things. They got pushed back, pushed back, and uh, finally the first series came out, and then we waited what seemed like an eternity um, for these to finally arrive. They arrove at my home, and I am dying to get these damn things outside of the box. So let us not waste any more time and take a look at Super 7 Ultimates New Japan Pro Wrestling Figures Series 2 outside of the box. Okay, so here he is outside of the box. It's Naito um, in all his Naito-y glory. And um, right away... Um, very cool. All the accessories that the Super 7 Ultimates come with um, are very, very nice. Um, so not only, um, I, I changed him up a little bit. He comes in this uh, hooded sweatshirt um, that says Tranquilo across the back and on the arms, Los Ingobernables. Um, the got the logo there on the chest. The um, cool part about this is that the hood itself is made of an elastic so that when you do pop it up it doesn't get that typical thing that when you have hoodies on action figures they they poke way up or or they or they don't go up at all or they, they kind of do this weird thing it conforms to the head in a way that looks like he's wearing a hoodie also when you fold it back you can fold it back in a way that it sits like a hood of a sweatshirt. I mean, it's just a weird little, you know, detail, but something like that is really cool. It makes a difference of an accessory that you're never gonna use, an accessory that you might use, and this is a pretty cool accessory for him to come with, and that's that's awesome. Also, it's got this T-shirt with the Los Ingobernables de Japan on there. Also, got this Los Ingobernables de Japan shirt, two T-shirts, um, got a head with the hat, also the head with the uh, no hat. Um, this head is just sort of a, a regular Naito expression. And this head has got the, uh, the, the eye, the eyeball, um, where he does a thing where he holds his eye open. He also has a, a couple of hands that can do this. He has this one, this one's a little wider. Um, he also has another one that you can pop on that's a little uh, smaller as well. Again, these figures all come with six sets of hands a piece. So you've got fists, you've got chopping hands, you've got uh, reaching, grasping hands, holding hands, lots and lots of hand options. The posability is pretty cool on these. I was a little disappointed that the posability, um, you don't have the 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 swivel on the leg because um, it, it would have been a lot easier to get him into the, the, the tranquilo pose. Speaking of tranquilo on the on the knee pad, I like the way that the knee pad is sculpted. It looks it looks like the real knee pad. It's almost as if it's an actual little knee pad on his knee. Got the logo on there. Um, you see, you got the uh, all the graphics and stuff on his gear, just like in real life, and on the uh, the wristbands. Um, very much looks like who it's supposed to be. It's a very good likeness of Naito. Um, not a lot of problems with it. The one one little issue. Let's get to to the issues here. Um, these belts, um, it comes with the IWGP Intercontinental and IWGP Heavyweight Championships. Um, the first series came with these belts as, as well, but the, the, the belts were in, in multiple colors um, as, as it is in real life. These um, just, just flat plates or whatever, still pain in the ass to get on and off of the figures. You can do it if you need to, um, but yeah. It's, it kind of sucks that the, the level of quality kind of went down a little bit. Um, I feel like maybe the, 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 last, uh, the last few uh, figures were a little bit more posable. Maybe not. Maybe these are just as posable as the other ones. Um, they're fine and they can pretty much do what you want them to do. Um, it's just they fall a little bit short when it comes to that. And especially when you're looking at big figures that cost $50 a piece. You really, really want them to be 
A1 Spectacular. And uh, these things are pretty goddamn good, and I don't regret getting them for a moment, but I, I, I do, uh, because of in comparison with the last one, it's a little underwhelming. Naito I opened first uh, just to see, uh, because I, I was dying to get this figure open. He's my favorite guy uh, from New Japan, and I, I really wanted to get this shit open and see him. And um, he's pretty cool, um, but I, I feel like he could be better. That is Tetsuya Naito. Okay, so here is Hiromu Takahashi, um, and, and here he is. Um, he is a very, for as colorful and as wild as the ticking time bomb Hiromu Takahashi is in real life, the action figure seems to be falling just a bit short. Sure, he comes with six sets of hands, just like all the rest of these guys do. Comes with two heads. Um, he's got uh, just sort of a regular head here and uh, one with his tongue sticking out. That's pretty cool. Um, got the hair back on this one, hair forward on this one. Um, and uh, then that's about it with the exception of the jacket that he's packed in. Now let's talk about this jacket for a second. This is allegedly, I guess, based on his entrance attire. Now, I know that New Japan can't just go, you know, using stuff that they don't own. I know there's a lot of just sort of licensed logos and horse shit and stuff all over Hiromu Takahashi's entrance jacket in real life. That's true. You're not going to be able to, to gather up all those licenses or get permission um, to use those. However, what you can do is you can do a little bit more than nothing. Because um, this is literally the least you can do. Um, is providing a, a just a white a jacket that doesn't really look... It was weird. I was like, why is he just wearing a white coat? Um, and it's supposed to have kind of the look of a leather jacket. And it really doesn't come off that way at least to me it's not it's not really coming off as a leather jacket um it has kind of the cut with the zipper and stuff like that and the little the little belt at the bottom but that's actually where it attaches because there is no zipper and um so yeah so that's that's fucking useless so um but beyond that like the 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 paint job on the pants is pretty good um, uh, we've got the time bomb on the ass. We got a boom on the leg. We got some bombs down the leg, and this is really what his tights look like. So they did a good job on on his tights there. He's got the the fuzzy shit on the boots, but it's just sculpted on there. Um, pretty pretty poseable, um, as poseable I guess as, as they can be at this point in time. They're not not as poseable as uh, as I would like them to be. I'd like them to have like some swivels and some things like that. Um, to get more dynamic poses out of them, especially when we're paying 50 fucking dollars for them. I'd like them to do a little bit more than stand at attention. Um, cool pink soles of the boots. That's pretty cool. Nice little color pop. Uh, the difference between the, the tape sculpts on the arms. So we're not just using generic arms, at least for the forearm portion of, uh, of Hiromu here. He does look good, and it does look like he's who he's supposed to be. But if you're thinking we're going to pay $50 for this, there are just... WWE figures, there are AEW figures that you can buy out there for $20, less than half of what this costs, that are going to come with uh, much more as far as uh, the accessories are concerned. Yes, I know this comes with six pairs of stupid hands, but really, are you going to use all those hands? And yeah, they're all kind of one size fits all with the exception of a few. And um, yeah, he, he's fists holding slapping like there's really not a whole lot more that you need maybe three maybe four sets of hands maybe an extra hand if he does something particular with his hand that you want him to do um i don't know that six was necessarily necessary uh, but fine this is a fine figure i don't i'm not mad at it at all um i wish it was a little bit better and that's hiromu takahashi Okay, so here is Bushi. Um, I got a hand it to Super 7 um, on the last figure when we were looking at Hiromu Takahashi. I, I thought like maybe they were they were holding back a little bit. I don't know what happened with that figure, and, and honestly, um, it came out a, a little bit bland um, for a guy who's very colorful and very awesome. But they they saw this guy. They saw Bushi. 
this masked wrestler and uh, yeah, Super Seven uh, responded. Responded with uh, with uh, six pairs of hands like they usually do, but they did a fantastic job on his gear. Looks just like it does in real life. Um, has all these little extra elements like that are our individual pieces. Has uh, has one on the arm here, two of them on the arm on this side, I believe. Yep, and then two of them on this side, a white and a black, sort of alternating colors. Very very cool. You can get a lot of awesome poses on him, and, uh, and there's his face. The mask, very nice sculpt on this. Um, I picked this head. This is uh, Bushi with a smirking face. He is boxed or packaged with the Bushi with the tongue out. Um, very cool, very dynamic looking uh, look for, for Bushi. Also, um, we've got a Bushi just sort of uh, with, a, with a straight face. Um, it's, it's a lot like this when I was trying to figure out what's, what's the difference between these two. He's smirking in that one. Got a little bit of a smirk on his face. And then finally, this, uh, the entrance, the entrance mask. Um, very, very cool with the, uh, with, uh, with all the accoutrement all over it. Almost like a sugar skull. Very, very fucking awesome. Um, lots of cool masks for Bushi to come with. And when you're gonna do a mask wrestler, yeah, you better, you better come with some multiple heads for multiple mask options. Very, very awesome. Um, looking at the knee pads, it has the same sort of effect. The way that they're sculpted, they look very real. They look like they're actual little knee pads on his knees. Um, the laces on the boots are, are the same color as the boots. Everything is sort of the same color there. Um, a lot of just black and white, maybe a little red here and there. It's flash of red. Uh, the mask, however, fine little details all throughout the mask. The laces, everything looks very, very cool. So it's kind of like, uh, in, uh, in one sense, yeah, it's kind of simple or whatever. In the other sense, they did go a full nine on the masks. And, uh, and for a, you know, for a guy who, let's be honest with, with Bushi, if you know anything about New Japan Pro Wrestling, um, as far as uh, Los and Gobernables, if you were going to rank them, in in, uh, in in order of importance, not in order of who who you know everybody likes or whatever. Um, and it, it just if you had to rank them, gun to your head, um, who's who's uh, who's last? Probably Bushi, but that's fine. Um, Bushi's still cool. And he's still awesome, and he still looks great. And this is a great looking figure. Um, he's got the black lips. And so he can spit the black mist in fools' faces, um, and he is very cool. Awesome, awesome figure. We're we're bringing it back, Super Seven. You're you're getting me back on on uh, board. Um, that is Bushi. All right. So finally, here is Evil, and I've got him in his wrestling gear. He actually comes packaged in his entrance gear. Um, which is, oh my God! Let's let's take a look at uh, let's put evil aside for a second and look at his gear. Um, wow, this robe, um, which is really really cool. It actually photographs really well too. Um, it's got velvet and uh, other materials. It separate it uh, uh, connects with Velcro in the back and then comes over like a big long coat. The hood itself. Um, and this is another hood technology thing um, that we're seeing in this set of figures. The hood has got a wire inside of it, so you can you can make the hood whatever shape that you feel like you want it to be. You can have it down, you can have it up, you can have it pointy, you can have it you know just sort of laying flat. You can kind of do whatever you want with that and have it hang the way that you know, to make it look more natural, to make it more look more like a natural. Hood, big, wide, wizard sleeves on the entrance gear, just like in real life. And that, wow, it's velvet. It's very, very luxurious. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Also comes with his uh, scythe that he carries to the ring with him. Um, the, the one uh, that he does carry in real life is a little bit more colorful, honestly. Um, this one, all one color, all one uh, piece of plastic. Um, yeah. Little disappointing. I mean, it's neat or whatever that they that they uh, included it, but at the same time, 
Could have been better. Could have been better. And that seems to be the uh, <laughs> the motif of this series. Also, his uh, entrance mask. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, again, all one boring ass color. Um, and then he comes with uh, Iken. Six pairs of hands, six pairs of heads. Again, I didn't mention with Bushi before. Um, it's the same thing with this one. These hands, he has uh, the, the finger tape on all, the, all of his sets of hands. Um, so they did go the extra mile and give you a little bit more uh, detail on these sets of hands. Um, he has two heads. He has one head with a, with the sort of a serious face, his serious evil face, and the other head has uh, this uh, face, the ah face, the open mouth face. Very very cool. Um, awesome awesome details on all of these things here. Look, we've got the, the details on the boots, the eyelets, the laces um, around the knee pad on each side. The knee pads look nice. The gear looks very nice. We do have some staining on the figure, which is disappointing. Um, the, the figures before, the figures that I, I got before from Super 7, the, the Ultimate uh, New Japan figures, um, they avoided staining because they had the, the plastic wrap inside the figures underneath the gear. Um, so that once when they packed them, even if they packed them a little warm, a little uh, um, before they were ready to go, um, the, the plastic would keep the, the, the clothes from staining on these figures. But uh, we do have a little staining on Evil, which kind of sucks for 50 bucks. Um, so that is evil and man look at him though. He's he looks really cool They did a good job on his hair. They did a good job on the sculpt He's as poseable as they can be at this point in time with these figures um, Again wish we had a little bit more posability on these um, For what we do pay, but it's not bad. It's not the worst thing in the world um, but a nice figure nonetheless and if you're a big fan of evil you gotta get it. This is the only this is the only game in town. And that is evil. Alright, so at the end of the day, the Super 7 Ultimates New Japan Pro Wrestling figures. The ultimate question is: Are they worth the money? And yes and no is what I have to say to that question. Yes. Um, when you're looking for New Japan action figures, um, this is what we got. This is the only choice you have besides looking for people that have made custom figures or making your own custom figures. As far as wrestling figures that are semi-compatible or compatible with your AEW or WWE figures, this is what we have here these new japan figures and um they they are in the same scale they are uh, you know basically you stand them next to each other they look like they belong together and this is what we've got so that's the yes as far as no is concerned it seems like they've uh, they've geared back a little bit on the quality since the last series and since the last series when when the last series was coming out I, you, I heard immediately about Series 2. They were talking about Series 2 and showing off all the cool things that were going to come with these figures. And, um, and they were really pumping them up. As this, as this series came out, I, it's been radio silence as far as another series of New Japan figures. So we're probably not getting any more Super 7 Ultimates New Japan figures. And ultimately, I feel like if you absolutely positively had to get every New Japan thing that was out there, you gotta get these. Um, if you're a big fan of one of these individual guys, absolutely, I would wholeheartedly recommend that you get these figures, especially Evil, especially Naito. Those are very nice figures. Even the Bushi figure does have its good points. The Hiromu Takahashi figure, kind of disappointing, and ultimately... Overall, the figure set's pretty nice, but it could have been better. And that is the New Japan Pro Wrestling Ultimates by Super 7.